What's on your radar, Ryan? So, the Wall Street Journal editorial board, we need to talk. You do not seem well. So, last week, I talked about an unhinged editorial they wrote attacking FTC chair Lena Khan for a ruling that companies who claimed their products were made in America actually had to be made in America. And I noted that in their editorial, they never mentioned the actual policy they were protesting. They were only upset at the process she used to implement the rule. It was a giant power grab, they complained. Okay, every right-wing op-ed page is entitled to a few duds. I mean, producing several screeds a day is not easy. But a pattern is developing over at the Journal, and I'm afraid the boys have gotten a bit obsessed. It might be time for an intervention before things get too weird. Here's a piece they ran Wednesday by a former FTC commissioner. Lena Khan is Icarus at the FTC. What are you talking about? The antitrust offensive and power grab will end with her wings melting in the courts. Do you have editors on the editorial page? How did that get through? Now, the day before, the editorial, the editorial board posted this gem. Yes, the journal wants you to believe that they support the merger of Amazon and MGM because they're worried about the unchecked power of Netflix. Now, when she was confirmed by the Senate, getting 69 votes, meaning lots of support from Republicans, the journal complained it was unfair because they didn't know she'd be named not just commissioner, but chair. The president appears to have hoodwinked Senate Republicans to install an unqualified 32-year-old progressive in a position with enormous power over business. House Democrats last week introduced several bills that would augment the FTC's power, especially to pursue big tech. Mr. Biden has given Senate Republicans another reason not to give the agency more power. The journal, by the way, mentions her age in almost every one of their editorials. Fox News has long had an obsession with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and barely an hour went by in her first term in Congress without a few segments about her. But for the Wall Street Journal, Lena Khan is the thinking man's obsession. This all matters not just because of how weird it is, but because the journal is often a leading indicator of where the right wing of the business community is going to aim its firepower. There's probably also some preemptive work being done. Biden, to his shame, still hasn't named an assistant attorney general for the DOJ's antitrust division, but the rumors are that antitrust attorney Jonathan Cantor is in the lead for that spot. It would be a huge blow to concentrated power if he gets the nomination, and it would send reinforcements for Khan. By gunning so hard for Lena Khan now, the journal is sending a signal of how much pain they'll try to bring if Biden adds Cantor to the mix, too. And tech companies are using the same arguments against Cantor that they're using against Khan. On Wednesday, Facebook announced that they want Lena Khan to recuse herself from any decisions having to do with them arguing that her previous academic and congressional work biases her against them. Amazon has argued the same thing, and the journal has backed them up in that claim. In April, the industry tried to kneecap Cantor in Politico with this reasoning. White House ethics officials are raising objections about DOJ antitrust candidates who have represented critics of big tech companies like Google, Facebook, or Apple, people familiar with the deliberations told Politico. Those concerns prompted one prime candidate for the department's top antitrust role to pull herself out of the running, the people said. And they would also pose a major obstacle to Biden hiring Jonathan Cantor, a progressive favorite who has represented many clients with complaints about Google. So the claim here is that if you have previously been critical of big tech, you can't be trusted to fairly regulate them. That's so ridiculous it doesn't deserve a rebuttal. Yet it's the case being made publicly about both Khan and Cantor. That big business is flailing this badly shows just how strange it is for them to find themselves the subject of regulators who actually plan to regulate. That's not how it's been for years. In fact, National Law Journal reported recently that FTC lawyers suddenly being asked to enforce the law are now getting their resumes together and heading for the exits. CNBC, meanwhile, has been warning their viewers to watch out. Lena Khan is a big deal for the M&A community. She is big. Right? And it's, uh, they're looking yeah, at they're it as scared. a potential loss of they're all significant scared. She's fees. 32. She's very young. By the way, we, we focus so much on technology. Uh, some people have mentioned, take a look at her writings at Yale on healthcare.
and, and take a look at that. So I'll send that out there as well because but, that may but be something she's that going to be want to focus on because she was particularly apparently right. uh, what, written she, extensively she United Health? What on she, health care. And she's certainly not let's pro say, you manage. No, she, let's say uh, those who like to see consolidation say, find it very problematic. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. Those who like to see consolidation find Lena Khan rather problematic. See, this is why I don't actually think the obsession with her is weird. And I think that right. you laid that case out really well in the radar. Yeah. It's that, like, actually, it makes a whole lot of sense. It's very rational for big business to have an obsession with Lena Khan at this point because she's a real threat to yeah. their business models. And so to that extent, I fully understand why the Wall Street Journal editorial board is very fixated on her. I fully understand why you have CNBC saying, listen, she's a big deal to the M&A yeah. community because they're reporting what's accurate. I mean, that's right. actually completely true. They reported, of course, as though it's the end of the world and sort of an apocalypse for big business. But in reality, it's yeah. just, you know, making the economy a fair place for markets. Right. And that, so that's why they're freaking out. But it's I'm actually glad the Wall Street Journal editorial board exists so that yes. you, like there's this way. So like we have this perfect case from big business. I mean, they're the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal. They're going to make big business's yeah. case and they're going to do it probably the best that, you know, that's going to be the best articulation of the pro business business argument that you can right. find in a lot of cases. And so I'm actually glad that they're so yeah. sort of shamelessly <laughs> like simping for big business here because then you can have Ryan Grim, co Grim come in and say, listen, this argument fails on yeah. counts X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and think of this as service journalism because I think most of our viewers are probably not reading the Wall Street Journal editorial page, nor would I suggest that you subject yourself to that on a regular basis. So we can keep you updated on their, on their war on Lena Khan. Uh, I'm sure that they'll have one soon on, the, on a recent uh, announcement that the FTC just made. We put this Warren Buffett uh, news. She, the, the FTC is saying it's going to step in and, and try to block a, a pipeline merger mm -hmm. that Warren Buffett. Right. So uh, and so there's a tweet from Matt Stoll. So Lena Khan blocks a pipeline monopol monopolization scheme by Warren Buffett <laughs> that would screw Utah, one they already tried in 1995. And uh, the, the way the FTC posted it was uh, was kind of snarky in a way. It was like, look. We already uh, blocked this in 1995. <laughs> now you're, there's even more competition between these companies. Why did this? Why did this even go forward? And they say at the end, this uh, a merger like this shouldn't have gotten out of the boardroom. And the National Law Journal, when they reported uh, that all of these attorneys are leaving the FTC, the headline kind of framed it as they're upset with their jobs at the FTC because they have to now regulate. But the, the, what's really going on is that because they're now regulating, there's more demand for corporate lawyers and, and particularly mm -hmm. for lawyers who have expertise in antitrust among these companies than, than there has been for a very, very, very long time. Uh, they're talking about $1,000 and $2,000 an hour fees mm -hmm. for these companies like these pipeline companies who are, who are deliberating whether or not they can make an offer uh, for this for this company and what the FTC is tr is trying to say with this one, like don't don't even try. Like yeah. we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to squash the obvious stuff like this. So that's how you have to do it, because you don't want big government to beget big business. And that's often mm -hmm. that how it happens. You basically have to come in and do like some version of scorched earth with your um, maneuvers here, because otherwise what you do is create a boon for corporate lawyers who can then find all of the ways to get around these things mm -hmm. and actually enrich the companies even further. And so they pay to get richer off of the regulatory state, um, even when we try to take strides towards it. I mean, you see this happen in the ta with taxes right. all of the time. Um, so I I'm looking forward to your merch, though. Ryan, right. oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm told yeah. Ryan has a, a merch right. line coming out. That's right. So the T-shirt that I that I have made, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll get this thing <laughs> into uh, the, the store at some point because uh, hand drawn. There are just there are so there's so many Wall Street Journal tears that you know people are you know people need to show their support for the Wall Street Journal in, in this in this very difficult time. You know, Lena Khan going after Warren Buffett went after uh, Jeff Bezos as two of the top 10 richest people, and she's only a, f a few more weeks in. So I think there are going to be a lot more tears to come, and we'll have more right after this.